We are nearing the end of 2016. The beginning of 2017 is only a few days away. In fact, today, as I'm recording this, this is actually the day after Christmas. And I will get to my Christmas presents in a moment. What I do on my website, I blog every Wednesday and every Sunday. And typically the last blog of the year or the first blog of the new year, I reflect upon the previous year and then anticipate some of what I expect might be happening usually from my website in the coming year. And I will do that as planned. But I can count on one hand how many people read my blog. So I thought I would vlog about it because the vlog, although it's not popular on YouTube, it does at least reach a few more people. I do have to say 2016 was an exciting year and it was a fun year. The most anticipated event of 2016 for myself and the people that I hung around with was the election on November 8th. I was part of a world news discussion group, which doesn't meet anymore, sadly, but we would get together regularly and talk about events in the news. It could be what China is doing in the South China Sea or what Putin was doing in Ukraine, what was happening in Syria and the people trying to get to a better life in Europe. We would follow all that, look at the various commentaries about it, kind of piece it all together. What does it mean? What does it indicate for the future? What might happen with NATO, for example? This past year, as we got into the primary season, where the primaries and the caucuses were happening, there was the Democratic and the Republican convention. Almost all of what we talked about was politics, and it was fun. <laughs> we had a lot of fun. Now, I have to say that, and we admitted this, <clears throat> that we live in the bubble here. This is the coast, actual coastline of Southern California one of the places in the USA where the intelligentsia lives. It's a different world here. We fully expected Hillary Clinton to win the election. We weren't sure about the Senate, who would win the Senate, the Republicans or the Democrats. We were hoping the Democrats would, would win control of the Senate, but we had no doubts about Hillary Clinton winning the presidency. The prediction websites all indicated that she would. Some of them gave her a 99% probability of winning the White House. Well, <laughs> obviously, they were all wrong. I watched the coverage of the election that evening on MSNBC. <laughs> and that was so much fun. Rachel Maddow, um, Chuck Todd, Kornacki, Steve Kornacki, the whole group, MSNBC, they were there. And they started off all happy and, and, and ebullient and, oh, Rachel Maddow, I love election evening, election day. This is democracy in action. And they were, like a lot of people, they were fully expecting a Hillary Clinton win. And then the results came in. It reminded me, maybe you've seen those videos occasionally on TV. It's winter time, glaring ice on some hill in a nice neighborhood, nice cars on either side of the road parked, and some idiot at the top of the hill decides he or she can make it down that hill in their car. And what happens? The car starts to spin, it starts to turn, it goes to the side, starts careening off the cars on either side of the road as it goes down the hill, bang, 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 bang bang like a small like a slow moving pinball <laughs> well, that, that's what that's what I, I was thinking about during election evening because as the the returns started coming in maine massachusetts vermont new hampshire connecticut rhode island new york you could see the atmosphere in the studio at msnbc change they were all yeah. and then the returns started coming in red state Red state, red state, red state, bang, 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 bang. I mean, by the end of the evening, they were like kind of looking at each other. What happened? What went wrong? <laughs> it was an amusing, a very amusing evening. 
And it was a good highlight to what had been a long anticipated event. I mean, half the year we were expecting this event. We weren't expecting the outcome, but we knew what was coming and we were following it very closely. I certainly was. Okay. And that was one of the things. Another thing that I did this year, toward the end of the year, I did it for Christmas Day. I do cooking videos on YouTube, and that's what my website is all about. A lot, all my recipes, links to all my videos are there. I always wanted to do a Christmas pudding. I saw the, I've seen the various movies, Scrooge, A Christmas Carol, where Mrs. Cratchit brings that Christmas pudding, that plum pudding, to the table. And I've always wanted to know what that tastes like. And a friend of the website, Nancy, said she was going to make one. And I thought, I should make one and do a video. And I did. And it was a lot of fun. Not a lot of work. A very interesting pudding. Very dense. Very heavy. The recipe says it feeds eight. <laughs> More like 16. It's so heavy and rich that... To me, an eighth of a slice of that pudding would be just too big. I would say 16, but in my recipe, I put it feeds eight because maybe, maybe people eat more than I do. I don't know. I'm kind of old. I don't eat as much as I used to. It was a fun thing to make. The one thing I didn't do with the recipe was I didn't do the flambe. Typically, what you do is you warm some liquor, brandy or rum, pour it over the top, and then you light it on fire, and you bring it to the table blazing. In one of my videos, my steak au poivre friend and I made that together. We tried that. <laughs> I nearly set my kitchen on fire. The problem was the liquor was too hot. So rather than the, the, the alcohol just evaporating gently, the alcohol was boiling out of the, the liquid. And when we put the match to it, this huge yellow flame just flared up. I had a, a filter up above under my hood and it was a, a piece of paper actually that would dim the light a little bit from my hood light because it was too bright, the one that I was using at the time. That caught fire and you can see in the video this thin gray ash <laughs> come sailing down. So I decided I wasn't going to do the flambe. But the pudding was really, really good. I'm very glad that I did that plum pudding this year. I put that on my YouTube channel. I uploaded it Christmas Day. I thought that would be the perfect day for it. And it's been doing pretty well out there. That was a fun one. Okay, <clears throat> since I'm talking about Christmas pudding, let's get to the Christmas gifts. We guys, we know that the, some of the best gifts you can get for Christmas are the gifts you get yourself. <laughs> this was my year. Now, every year since I retired, I've had to do something. Like, for example, the first year when I retired, my shed outside. I have a, a storage shed outside. My old one was literally falling down. The termites had gotten to it. It was barely standing anymore. I knew what was going to happen, that one of these winters would have a really good storm, which we didn't have for a long time. We've actually been in a drought for quite a while. But I was afraid we would have a really powerful storm, a windstorm that would literally pick that thing up and blow sheet metal through the air, breaking people's windows, damaging their homes. Heaven forbid sheet metal would fly into somebody and injure them badly. It had to go. It had to go. So that was the first thing I did after I retired. I tore it down. I brought in a contractor. I had a new one built. Spent a lot of money for it. I didn't go over to Home Depot and get one of those you erect it sheds. I had a contractor come in, put a concrete slab down, two by fours, a fireproof siding on the outside. It cost me $8,000, but it's a beautiful shed. I love that shed. Very useful. I did that. I had to replace my plumbing one year because this home, I live in a mobile home and a they typically, they're plumbed with galvanized pipe. It rusts, it rots out. I had a break out where the water heater is. I fixed that myself. I had another break a few months later under the kitchen sink. It's time. I called the plumber, had everything replaced with all good copper pipe. That was one. I replaced my landscaping because I had a lawn 
And with the drought that we've been going through, it's pointless to water a lawn. You're just wasting water. I tore out all my lawn. I did all the work myself. I sifted all the dirt to get the roots out so that I wouldn't have grass growing up under the rock. I put down all natural sandstone, not the fake cement stuff, the real sandstone. Then I planted daimondia in between and the little gaps in between because <clears throat> that's drought tolerant. Well, this year I knew what I had to do because the cable company announced way back during the summer that come October they were going to be going all digital and all analog TV sets and cable boxes would no longer work. And sure enough, I ran around, I don't know, October 23rd or something when they switched over. I only got about six, eight channels on my TV. I had a, a really old, really old, 21, 22 year old, 35 inch Mitsubishi picture tube TV. And people would say to me, Dennis, when are you going to get rid of that old dinosaur? Why don't you get a nice flat panel? But it worked. I didn't want to part with it while it was working. Well, it stopped working, finally, when they went to all digital. Here's the problem. I knew what I was going to have to deal with when it came to replacing the TV because all of my stuff was old. My speakers, some of my speakers were 30 years old. If you, if you know what a speaker looks like, it's got a paper cone in there around the edge. There's some sort of a flexible rubber foam thing that would support the cone. That had all rotted out. I replaced the woofers a few years back. The woofers are the big speakers. When I took the grills off this year, the mid-range speakers that support film had all rotted out. It was all gone. It was like dry skin in there. Those had to go. My amp receiver, my DVD player, those were phono plugs. Nothing was, nothing was HDMI. So I knew I had to buy new everything. But I waited. See, I waited. I knew what was coming. I saved my money. So I bought my toys for Christmas. I took advantage of the, the sales at the end of the year. <laughs> I bought a 65 inch ultra high definition 4K TV. Oh, it's beautiful. I've been watching football. Normally I don't watch football games, but I've been watching football games. It has been fun. High definition. It's beautiful. I got a new Denon amp that's got a nice feature on it. I'll get to that in a moment. But I got that. I got a new DVD player, DVD Blu-ray CD player. That was expensive. But I wanted this, it's a Yamaha, their best model, but I wanted it because it plays MKVs, which is a, a video format. These are files that I can download. For example, I was addicted to the BBC TV shows uh, Top Gear, Jeremy Clarkson, Richard Hammond, James May. I've seen all the shows at least twice, many of them three times. They're all in MKV format. Well, the later ones were all in MKV format. I wanted a player that would play MKV format. My player's got a USB connection right in the front. I can put the shows that I want to watch on a little thumb drive, those flash drives, put it into the front, go to the menu system in the player, select the video I want to watch. I can watch the TV shows. Now they're doing the same three guys. They left the BBC. They're now working for Amazon. And they're now doing new shows. Um, Grand Tour. The Grand Tour. And they're just as funny as ever. If you're not familiar with the shows, they're car shows. But it's not just about cars. Because I'm not a car guy. It's like these guys' toys are cars. They test drive cars. They do fun things with cars. They, they love cars and they have they have good chemistry. It's just it's a fun, fun show to watch. I can watch them now on my big TV because my player plays MKV format. One of the things that happened was that I discovered 4K format. I put that on a keychain drive, tried putting that on my player in my player and it said can't handle the format 2160. P. My player will only go up to 1080p, but I figured out with my computer, my laptop, I could hook it up to my 
my um, amp receiver using the auxiliary port. It's all HDMI. I had to get it converted to go to HDMI. I can watch 4K format. I mean, it's beautiful. The details are so fantastic. It's like you can't see it all. You have to like pause just to look at the screen and then continue on. Absolutely beautiful. That's the toys. Those are the toys that I got for myself. All new speakers. Everything is all brand new. I got a beautiful home theater system again, finally, after I got rid of all my old junk. So that's what I wanted to vlog about. As far as what's coming up for the, the coming year, I'm hoping no more major expenses. I think I'm done paying for major expenses. So I think this next year is just going to be a year to just watch my TV. The one thing I'm most anticipating that I want to watch is the Tour de France. I would like to be able to watch that in high definition. I've always wanted to and never been able to because of my old TV. This year, come July, I'm going to be able to watch the Tour de France. So that's what I'm looking forward to in 2017.